Hi everyone, welcome back to Switch Up and to the episode where we talk about some interesting games. Yep, we've got six games to talk about today, three each. Some are new, some are not, or some are just new to us. Some I've never heard of, actually. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, there are genuinely some, some very interesting and very new games in this episode. Yeah, so yeah. what are they? Well, let's find out. Okay, the first one I want to talk about then is a game called Heidelberg 1693. I can't even say that. <laughs> so this is uh, this is a game that I had had my eye on for a while actually. Um, it had a physical release, but I'd forgotten about it because it was through Red Art Games, and generally they sell through their own website. Okay. And then their game starts to trickle on to like third-party retailers. Yeah. So I saw it the other day and picked it up, and it's a uh, it's like a 2D action uh, platformer, I guess. But it has a few little interesting mechanics in there that, for me, elevate it past some of its competition. All right. D who made this one? Do we know? I don't know who the developer was. Yeah. Not, as I said, I know it was published by Red Art. But um, the basic premise is that you play as one of the uh, one of King Louis the Fourteenth's musketeers. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a ludicrous story. So yeah, you're you're one of the musketeers, but it's set in obviously Germany in Heidelberg in the 17th century, and you're fighting zombies. <laughs> that makes sense. Why not? Why, why not? And then the story. I mean, the story is drip fed in after every level through like cutscenes. It said it wanted to go for like the uh, the silent films of the 20s and 30s in terms of how these are portrayed. They're they're ludicrous. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what the story is to be honest. But they they're quite um, they're presented well, and yeah. you know they whilst adding nothing to it in terms of story that was coherent, I enjoyed them being there. You know. Yeah, so this, I think I peeked over your shoulder you were playing yesterday. This yeah. looks lovely. Yeah, it, it's a lovely looking game. It's a pixel art style. Mm. Um, so basically, you make your way through the levels, as you would expect. And for the most part, you're using a sword um, to take the enemies down. But what's interesting about it is that you do have, obviously, a musket as well. Yeah. But you have to, you get one shot and then you have to reload it. And it's a long reload with an animation where they're like, they're putting the powder down into it. And very authentic. Very authentic. And it, make, it makes it much more strategic because you can't just keep firing. Mm. And you have to really think about when you use it because if you reload, you're, you're incredibly vulnerable. But any um, of the enemies that are using muskets, the same rules apply. Okay, so is you, this a roguelike? No, it's just a straight platformer. Yeah, no roguelike elements at all. So you, it's when, when to use your shots and when to use your sword. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's quite a difficult game, I must say. You yeah, know, there's a lot on the screen. There's a lot trying to kill you at all times. And the bosses, I mean, I fought a boss yesterday that I did beat in the end. But wow, I mean, for the first, it counts how many lives you've lost when you pause it in, right. the, top, in the top of the screen which is one of those like <laughs> I like that but it's quite annoying as well yeah. I must have lost 40 lives on this box 40? yeah yeah he was caning me because he was just jumping all over the shop and you've got so little health like sh shots if you get shot it's a one hit kill oh you've got three or four hearts but most enemies do at least two hearts damage yeah and a lot of them as I say if you're shot for example you're you're killed in one hit and this boss was just wrecking me <laughs> he was destroying me and I did beat him in the end I felt pretty good about that actually yeah we should do but it's it's a tough game but it's the fact that it has that mechanic with the uh, the shots mm. that slows the gameplay down in a game where you're for the most part flying through which sounds like a recipe for disaster actually yeah. works really well yeah having a planned uh, weakness yeah. within your protagonist i think is a is a is a bonus yeah i would know? say so and the fact it applies for the enemies too yeah. just makes it feel very fair you know yeah you need that i find for for a game to keep me interest especially one when it's in a sea of you know yeah, sea of them yeah. Yeah, yeah having an interesting mechanic like that is really useful like the one i did yesterday um for the grime game right. having the mechanic where you actually had to block certain attacks to regain your ability to heal yourself yeah it just kept me you know interested Invested. In that. Yeah, yeah exactly it's um i mean i did read you know that website is it how long to beat yeah i always have a little peek on there see what they think and it said three and a half hours which i'm sure is, is genuine that you could be in that time but i would be surprised if most people were, yeah. were hitting those times do you know what i mean i would i would think it could take me double that <laughs> to beat but i i, I think that's a, quite a fair a yeah. fair time do you know what i mean for this sort of game yeah i i'm very happy with this one lovely Good purchase you know that looked interesting to me yeah <laughs> exactly right just, just saying that now <laughs> but i'm going to get my most controversial game out of the way nice and early mm -hmm. all right this is postal brain damaged which oh, i right. think is an outrageous name like I, I get it you know it's postal if you know the series they try and offend yeah so yeah, basically yeah. if you're offended by this game like it's trying to offend you it's, it's that's what it's trying to do right okay. this is a uh 90 shooter so some call them boomer shooters i, I never use that for me it was just a first person shooter mm. um because i'm ancient <laughs> and it starts off basically in the dream world of the main protagonist i think he's called travis don't quote me on that but i think he is uh, and he wakes up in a dream why is there i haven't got a clue but there's an alter ego of himself 
basically right. he's chasing through these dreams so each stage he's kind of running his himself is running away and he's following him mm -hmm. and he wakes up in a suburbia like <laughs> with a uh, how best to describe it <laughs> it's basically a chainsaw on a stick okay chain stick a, a chain stick yeah, I like that yeah I like that and he uh, and that's it you just you, you're just going through these stages causing one tongue carnage like and it is Postal's always tried to and I, I've always found this a bit odd like I, I get the idea of like letting you do anything yeah but kind of steering you towards certain things right it's always made me a little uncomfortable okay you know like because there's all these people and they scream and whatever and they're running away and it obviously wants you to just massacre them oh, right, yeah. you'll see in the footage that i'm mostly not unless they're getting away <laughs> <laughs> actually there is one clip <laughs> i think of me kicking one of them off the edge of a cliff <laughs> <laughs> I got bored. I was like, I have that. <laughs> Oof. And then and I kicked the dog off a cliff as well. Oh, and then there were the cats. <laughs> So, so, so the statement about how you, you, you felt railroaded, I don't like this. I don't want to yeah, do yeah, this, well, man. But then you just destroyed the world. They yeah. changed me. Yeah, I can see. It, yeah. it changed me. <laughs> so yeah, it does. It, it is one of those where it wants you to just go absolutely ballistic. Right, okay. Um, when you get the shotgun, like, it's a great weapon. It does throw in a few interesting mechanics, like you've got a hook shot. Actually, it's called the get over here trademark. All oh, right, okay. You yeah. know you know what that's about. <laughs> and you can like hook enemies in and it's full of like clara everywhere. It's a bit like it's a silly thing to say it's a bit repetitive mm -hmm. it's a bit repetitive right yeah you know it's a boomer shooter like it, it really is but the, the enemies you see the same ones over and again like there's these flying guys that throw burgers at you okay it has got a cool mechanic though whereby you can kick back a projectile and it does slow motion and then you can do more damage i, I quite like that mm. it, again they always try and have their version of doom's like new melee system right they all do it now, yeah don't they yeah. there was the chainsaw in um bolt gun uh, and now this has this kick mechanic but if you like first person shooting and you're not offended <laughs> by anything because <laughs> trust me it just gets worse and worse <laughs> it's, I actually just said to Glenn before basically you can drink some hot sauce right yeah right and then um, when you have hot sauce in real life it comes out doesn't it yeah and yeah. you can um, evacuate it <laughs> onto your foes <laughs> setting them aflame <laughs> It's just absolutely outrageous. I don't know how if you're how are you gonna show this? I think you'd be I think you'd be fine. We'd have to maybe pixelate some things. <laughs> pixelate the urination. Yeah, the, if the whole of this section is just a blur, <laughs> you just imagine what we're talking about. I'm sure. Thankfully the game graphics are very pixelated anyway, so you know. I was gonna say it's probably done its yeah, job for us, yeah, isn't I it? I think it has. And that's the thing, it, it does that thing where it's constantly referencing the fact that it's a dream. Okay, right. It's that like full fall breaking, oh it's a dream, you know, like oh we would never do that in real life kind of thing. So is it are there actual objectives? Or Follow the man. Right. Oh, that's okay. Just, chase just the keep man. chasing him. It's it's proper old school. Right. There are key cards. You know, it's like there's a blue door. Oh, like, okay. I need to get through there. And he's like, oh look, a key card again. And you go and get it. <laughs> I like that. You know, I do like it. But yeah, it, it does make you like cringe a bit. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Then postal brain damaged. Nice one. <laughs> right. The next one I want to talk about is uh, another red art one. Funny enough, it's called Colt. Canyon. Is that how do you spell that? C O L T. C O L T. Right. Canyon. Yeah. So it's uh, a western roguelite mm -hmm. with a top-down view. I mean, I say pixelated, but I'm talking like Atari 2600 pixelation, albeit on a much more refined and detailed scale. You yeah. Know, you play as like a, a tiny little person, um, and you basically have to walk <laughs> like walk from left to right, from screen to screen, killing enemies, just getting as far as you can. Um, you're, you're after. I think you, you, your friend gets kidnapped in the first scene, okay. and you just keep going and going to, to try and find her. And obviously, like, so you go from, um, or every so often, sorry, you'll you'll get into a screen that's like an ambush screen mm. or a boss for example and there are weapons that you can find and upgrade to you'll find um people in wagons selling stuff but you don't have any currency you have to use your parts your your health to buy things like better guns or what have you it's quite an interesting concept you yeah. have to use your health you know um a bit like the, the the rooms in isaac aren't they like those challenge rooms that you yeah. come across every so often and you also find people that have been kidnapped and you can rescue them and mm. then they will offer you an upgrade okay like a perk of some description and that's where you get that kind of progression of passive ability or what have you yeah so it all builds up obviously as you go along yeah i mean obviously it's, it doesn't do anything new mm. at all it doesn't necessarily do anything exceptionally well but it does everything pretty um, well yeah, yeah no, i mean not even just well enough like better than well enough yeah. but you know it does it pretty well um it's a good game i and it, i played it first for you know a couple of runs and i was like yeah okay it's pretty standard turned it off tried another game that i bought which i'll talk about in a minute but in the back of my mind i was like actually i might have another guy now. you know <laughs> it, it did it it hooked me back in and i played it for a lot longer the second time round. and it is it's is a good little game it's, it's quite fun actually and um you cannot you can turn off the road light element completely wow okay 
So basically, if you, if you do turn it off, every time you enter a new screen, if, should you die in that screen, you can just restart from that, that screen. They should all have this stuff. They yeah. really should, shouldn't they? Yeah. Just let people tailor it to how they want. Exactly, exactly. And you unlock new characters and they all have their own abilities. So you have, like the reason it's called Colt Canyon, the, the main character is called Colt. Oh, okay. So he's your Joe Average, you know, and then you get someone that's got a better gun, but he's, he's a lot slower. Mm -hmm. Someone that's got more health, someone that's got literally no health at all, mm -hmm. but they're speedy and their their weapon's pretty quick to reload, whatever. Uh, someone's got a bow and arrow, so ammo is easier to come about. Yeah. You know, you know the drill, but it all does work well. Like, it's a very refined game. So is there a hub area? A couple of questions. Is there a hub? No. No hub? No. What's the meta progression? The character unlocks. The character unlocks are the meta progression. Um, yeah, I can't can't think of any other possibly things like if you uh the skills that you unlock will then show yeah. up again maybe next time something like that but nothing in terms of actually character strengthening so very um binding of isaac yeah very much so yeah. but with that added bonus if you like that you can turn off mm. the roguelike completely and just play it as a straight game you know and you said it had multiplayer as well didn't it you? did yeah which we haven't we'll tried have have but we'll go have to have that. a go it's, it's up to two players apparently yeah i mean obviously you'd have to get past the aesthetic so as well as being heavily pixelated it's like a sepia tone yeah which you'd expect in a, a Western game. It's, mm. it's pretty standard, isn't it? But yeah, I, I mean, obviously it's cheaper on the eShop than I paid physically for it. Right. It may be one to you know, look out for a sale on. It's a good game. Do you know what? It's funny because uh, for whatever reason, Red Art Games, we've worked with most people, haven't we, over yeah. the years? Yeah. And Red Art, I haven't really seen many of their games in the past, but every time I look at one, I'm like, that's a decent game. Yeah, that's it. I mean, all three of mine are from Red Art and it's not by design. No. Basically, I, I bought the one I mentioned just now, the Heidelberg one, which I had had my eye on for a while on Amazon. And whilst on there, I clicked on their name and it brought up their games obviously right and this one and the next one I'd never even heard of no. so I just took a punt on them do you know what I mean and all three I'm happy to say are good games you know oh, happy days well yeah. that's all right <laughs> yeah. there you go red art <coughs> email <laughs> <laughs> All right, my next game then is the new Ace Attorney game, the Phoenix Wright. Uh, what's it called? It's like Apollo. Remember. Yeah, Apollo Justice. Apollo Justice. That's it. Like yeah, that. Ace Attorney sub trilogy. It's a new trilogy of of their games, featuring the new character who's uh, the protege of someone else. Uh, and then you start out, and your first case is uh, Ace himself. Yes. Yeah. He's uh, <laughs> he's the defendant, isn't he's he? He's a yeah. defendant. I discovered very quickly that these are potentially not naturally my types of games. <laughs> Um, you basically have to carry out a case, either I think it's def like defence or prosecution, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you have to make objections to statements. So the whole point of it, it's like a puzzle, really. You're looking for uh, discrepancies in what's said to the evidence that you've been provided, yeah. and then you're trying to object or push them on certain areas. Now, pushing won't cost you anything. So if you want to, if, if a statement's given to you and you want to just say, uh, drill down into it and say, well, give me a bit more information, mm. that won't cost you anything. But when there's an objection that you make, or if you use a piece of evidence to challenge a statement, that will then cost you one of the points in the bar in the corner. And obviously if that reaches zero, you fail. Yeah, yeah. so there's, these uh, came out before, didn't they, these games? Yeah. I think it, possibly the 3DS. Uh, apologies if I'm wrong there. I know the series started on the, on the DS, but uh, it's not a series in any of its incarnations that I've really played a lot of, I must say. And it's not because I don't like these sort of games. I mean, I was saying to you yesterday that the CSI games, yeah. back on the, well, I played them on the Xbox 360. I, I always enjoy that sort of, you know, where you have the investigation part and then you have the prosecution part or however it works but i just never i've never dived into these games no it does like you say it does feel familiar to a couple of games that i've played in the past but distant past I'm yeah talking like when i was talking telling you about kgb back in the day right. that's like for me the most recent similarity I, I i do think i could enjoy it i just think for me personally would i be spending my time in here probably not yeah i mean the problem not problem exactly but this sort of game i play with my wife yeah. But for it to be a game that you can play with someone else enjoyably so, it has to have voiced cutscenes. Mm. Just because if you're both sitting there reading text, yeah. not knowing if the other person's finished it, it just drags it down. And that's not a fault of the game. No. That's just probably why I haven't played this one as opposed to some of the, the similar sort of yeah. games, even if they're not as good. Yeah. Just because they have that and it makes it easier to play with, with her, you know? Yeah, what I will say is the cases themselves and the way that they're delivered is, is really quite interesting. And the fact that you can go in and look at individual pieces of evidence, looking for clues like we were looking for the fingerprints on the bottle and stuff like that. The way that that's presented is, is quite nice actually. And like Glenn says, 
it is a good game. There's no two ways about it. Yeah, and from what I have seen of the series over the years, which isn't huge amounts, but from what I have seen, the, the writing's always top notch. Yeah, you know, the humor's on point and whatnot. You know, what have you? But yeah, I, I do. Uh, I don't wish they had cutscenes necessarily because they are what they are. But that's probably just what's stopped me from playing them because mm. it is an ideal game for me and my wife to play together. But just objection. <laughs> the objection is it doesn't have voice acting. You know, so it just slows it down. But yeah, no, I'm I'm sure they are good games. And anyone that wants to recommend which one. Uh, for me to play individually with to start here or somewhere else please do feel free to uh, stick it down below my final game then is a game called Metalloid Origin is that made by Red Art Games by any chance <laughs> it's published by them for oh, sure yeah uh, now this one is dirt cheap on the eShop actually mm. compared to the physical which isn't ex overly expensive but there is a discrepancy so if you're looking for a you know a good cheap pickup this is about £6 or oh, your, obviously or, or your regional equivalent but um, it's I suppose it's it's like a, a Mega Man platformer not, mm. not, not exactly like like it. I mean, the main hook for me with Mega Man was the fact that once you defeat a boss, you took their weapon, right. and then you could choose another boss that would be weak to that weapon type. You know, doesn't have any of that. But just in terms of level layout, general shooting action, mm -hmm. even how the bosses are presented, it reminds me of a Mega Man game. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's got a lovely pixel style. Um, I don't know, kind of early 16-bit, I guess. Nice detailed background, some nice parallax scrolling in there. Good variety in the levels, and uh, you you basically have like a, a midway boss and then a final boss for each stage. And again, those bosses are tough. Yeah. Well, the, the end bosses are not so much the mid bosses, but yeah, it's just similar to the other game, I guess. It's that closed environment, mm -hmm. single screen, and the, the bosses are just like hyperactive. They're just <laughs> bouncing about all over the place, and it's just hard to get out of the way. That's where you lose a lot of your energy, you know. Yeah. So is this like uh, again? I have to ask: Is this linear? It's linear. Linear platformer, right? yep. Okay. It's straight platformer, as you would, you know, played in back in the day. Mm -hmm. You have a few different characters you can choose from. I've only played as, as one, but they all have different weapon types. Okay. Uh, and what you can do, so you collect like gems as you go about. You know your, your rings from Sonic, your coins yeah, from Mario. Yeah, yeah. But what is good about it actually is that they're called credits in the game. But you you use them whenever you get game over to buy a new continue. Mm -hmm. But also you can put them into upgrades and skill trees and whatnot and unlock better weapons with them. So it's that kind of risk reward of I could blow my whole budget on this new weapon type. Yeah. But if I get game over, I can't afford to continue. Oh. Which is quite interesting. Again, yeah. just, just that little tweak, you know. So why would I play this over the sea of other ones? Is there anything that makes it particularly stand out in your mind, or is it? pretty just of a good you know a good example i mean it's, it's a good game yeah without being again exceptional or, or uh, reinventing the wheel mm. but i did like that little twist with, yeah, with the credits cool. just you know it just made me think because i was you know you had 1500 credits say and mm. it was 50 to to buy in and for the most part i was blitzing through it until i got to a boss and then i was losing them <laughs> hand over fist and i was like that's a lot in it you know mm. but then saw that you use the same money for those upgrades right. and it was like oh okay now it makes sense yeah. now i see where we're going so i would say for that reason but also also for the fact that if you're buying it digitally, dirt cheap, you know, and it goes on sale, you know, if you look at Deku Deals, it has that little graph, doesn't it? Yeah. Regularly, and for about £2 a pop, for that price, I mean, it's an absolute no-brainer, you know? Perfect. All right, my last one then is a game I bought two days ago. It's called Trash Punk. Uh, well, I wasn't enticed by the title, that's for sure, <laughs> but it looked... I did the whole thing, you know, judge a book by its cover. It looked interesting enough, and it was reduced, the classic, 90% off, down to like 89p. Yeah, yeah. Which my daughter laughed at me about. She was like, yeah, that's going to be rubbish. <laughs> and uh, it's actually okay. Yeah. Now, if you've played Blazing Beaks, I said this yesterday, it feels like it was made by the same people. And if it was, then, you know, well done. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't unlucky. <laughs> exactly. But it's, this is a high score chaser. So it looks like your typical roguelike, doesn't right. it? Yes, it does. Yeah, but this yeah. is an arcade high, high score chaser. Start a run, off you go, try and get the highest score. You move from room to room once you've cleared all the enemies. Uh, and there are different weapons. Like There's like a lightsaber. The difficulty here is ammunition is really scarce. Mm -hmm. So you, then you have to switch to your melee weapons. Is it melee or melee? Or mm, melee. Yeah, melee. Well, I would say melee. Yeah, yeah, melee. It's like Melee Island from Monkey Island. Good, <laughs> great game. <laughs> but yeah, you switch to those and try and wait till your ammo's kind of replenished. Yeah. Brutally difficult. That, that, we were playing Borderlands the other night on Friday and we were fighting this boss and it could like, it could shoot where you were going to go. It was yeah. like a Jedi, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Even though like, it, it must have just anticipated, like it must just see your trajectory and fire, you know, where you're going to go. Mm. You could dodge it, I think, but 
it was hard, it was wasn't tough. it? Yeah, it was tough. And that's what these all the enemies in this game shoot where you're going to go. It's, <laughs> it's brutal. So nine times out of ten, you're going to die quite early on, and then hopefully want to go for another run. It tries to do that whole addictive thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't play it. Obviously, you were playing it as I was playing something else. But um, I like the look of it, like mm. that top-down look. You said you know that classic, almost roguelike yeah. feel in that respect. But it also mixed up the environments fairly often. From what I saw, I don't know if that was randomly generated or what. But it probably was some form of random generation, wasn't it? But you did move from like desert to a to a snowy tundra. Yeah. I will say I don't know if it. I think it could. There's been so many roguelites that have done the core shooting and movement mechanics so well mm -hmm. that now when I don't have things like a dodge roll or a, or a dash or something to help me get out of the way. Yeah. It can just feel a little bit restricted in that sense. You mm. know? Whether or not those come in later, I doubt it. You know, it just doesn't feel like that. But then on the flip side of that, is it's super simple, as an arcade game should. Yes. You know? Like yeah. you move with one, and then you've got two buttons: switch weapon and fire. I suppose. And twin stick. That's the like the power of perception, isn't it? Mm. If you perceive it as an arcade game, yeah, you probably enjoy it more than if you perceive it as a roguelite. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. And for some, I think just it not being a roguelite is going to be a, a bonus. Yeah. 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 It's um it's funny with games that go on sale. On the eShop. I'll be honest, I've, I very rarely go on the eShop for, for sale, for a yeah. sale page. <laughs> I just it sounds so weird, right? But <laughs> I see games that are that cheap as like an obstacle that gets in my way as opposed to a new game to play. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, Because I have physical games that I want to play. Yeah. And I think well, if I buy this for 89p, it's just another bloody game now that I've got to mm. <laughs> try and get out of the way at some point to get to these games that I genuinely wanted to, you know, I took the yeah. time to select off of a shelf rather than bought impulse wise because of the price. It's a good way to think, to be honest, because that's exactly what. What's happened? Yeah. You know? Even though I only played an hour or so of it, it's, uh, yeah, you're right. I've got a million games that I'd rather play. And it's not a knock against any game, and, you know, let, let, please let the sales continue. But just for me, I try to just <laughs> stay clear of distractions yeah. and just play the games that I've paid more than that for that are otherwise going to collect dust forever, you know? Yeah. This, so this was on the new releases page, I will say. So oh, I was yeah. having a look at the new release, see if anything good come out. I, I kind of hovered onto this and I was like, oh, wow. And I think they have to some just put them on sale to just get seen because the eShop yeah. is so rubbish. Yeah, no, so, I, I you know, right. fair play to it. Yeah, no, absolutely. So there we go, uh, another six games. Some new, some not. Some interesting. Well, all interesting, I think, in, interesting. in one way or another. But yeah, please do let us know of any games that you've played recently. Stick it in the comment section below. That would be good. Yeah, absolutely. Do save yourself money on digitals or physicals. All the links and information are down in Don's list description. Did I just go for it? Uh, I might have done, Glenn. Uh, it's kind of fluent. Uh, allegedly, yeah. <laughs> A big thank you to our patrons and our channel members for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.